Well, we tell a lot of our engineers to think entrepreneurially. I guess I was exposed to a lot of can-do spirit when I was a kid. I grew up in Silicon Valley. My next-door neighbor, Carl Bacon, uh, was the inventor and builder of the modern-day roller coaster. And uh, his company was named Aero Development. And he produced most of the rides for Disneyland and Disney World. And Carl routinely invited the neighborhood kids to be his first live cargo uh, when testing his rides, but only after running the rides loaded with sacks of rice for a few weeks to see if they'd fall out. Um, others in that day must have been a lot more relaxed. Uh, what is your view of suggesting an entrepreneurial venture for today's young people? Well, you know, you're right. Mothers back then were more relaxed. There were seven of us when I grew up. They never knew where I was. Yeah. You know, and, and with my friends, too. You know, I mean, you know, it's survival of the fittest. You lose some and some survive. But you learn from your experiences. And that's what's missing. These yes. young people, the parents have blown so much smoke up them and told them as little kids that they were special. And then they become a little older. They become amazing. You know, if Einstein were alive today, compared to these kids, maybe he could make it as a manager at Walmart. <laughs> so these kids have very inflated egos without producing anything. But having said that, now they go. Now reality is hitting the road. What Mama and Papa told them about them being anything that they wanted to be, and all they had to do was keep going to school. That's not going to get all A's. That's not going to pan out anymore. This is a time when the young people, and we're going to start seeing it now coming from them, where they're going to be the new inventive class. So again, it's a, it's a different time, and, and we have lost something, but we're going to gain it back. The only way, Eric, the only way that we see us getting out of this, this the problems that we have now is through the entrepreneurial spirit. Go back to the 1990s. Bill Clinton gets elected on the mantra, it's the economy, stupid. We were in a recession. What got us out of the recession? Simple. It was the Internet Revolution. And Al Gore didn't invent it. Products were manufactured. They were designed. They were engineered. Our whole lives have changed. We're old enough to remember when we didn't have computers. We're old enough to remember when, you know, it was... It was, we had a modem for dialogue, and, and yet you saw these figures moving like staccato figures on the internet. Look how advanced we've become. It was a productive capacity, and the engineering minds, and that's the one thing that this country still has that no other country has, is the innovative spirit. We're losing it because they're bailing out, they're too big to fail, they're turning the tables to make it only good for the big guys. Yeah. So having said that, we still have that spirit that the rest of the world envies. And that's the entrepreneurial spirit, but think of it. When you're thinking like an entrepreneur, you think like a trend forecaster. We don't only look at economic data, we look at social change, geopolitics, we look at environmental, we look at consumer, business family. We look at over 300 different trend categories, always making connections with the understanding that all things are connected like the blood which unites us all. If you're only going to think like an engineer, if you're only going to think as a, as a uh, salesperson, if you're only going to think as a manufacturer of product, you're looking at the world through the eyes of your profession. You're missing everything that's going out on the periphery that's directly affecting you. So in order to think like an entrepreneur, you have to think like a trend forecaster. You need to take a global view of issues and events. Opportunity misses those who view the world through the eyes of their profession. That's great advice, Gerald. Um, we tell our engineers to learn economics. You know, financing, understanding money, credit, uh, equity, and getting a better economic education is essential to building a business, and uh, especially in these times, is critical to avoid being victimized by the fire sector of the economy, you know, the finance, insurance, real estate sector that's, that's grown at the expense of our manufacturing capacity. 
As an example, entrepreneurs can obtain financing from local banks, family, and friends. So there are alternatives to the big, the too big to fail banks, right, Gerald? I, I stay away from that. The only reason I have we, we deal with one one of the larger banks is because we do a lot of international business. Other than that, my money is in all my community banks, my local banks, and and I, I I don't buy anything big that I don't have to. I buy first. I buy local. I support my neighbors every way I can. Of course, that's the way this country was made. We're going through a transition period now, and it's a very critical time, by the way. You know, people say, you know, what's going on with the government with these all these bailouts and rescue packages and stimulus programs? Is the country becoming socialistic? Socialism is egalitarianism. Bailing out too big to fail, I think a better definition came from someone who knew a thing or two about it, called the merger of state and corporate powers, fascism, according to Mussolini. And that's what we're seeing in America, fascism is coming to America. Who made up this too big to fail stuff? We learn all our lives we're taught about competitiveness and capitalism. You rise and fall on your own merits. There's no bailouts to anybody, except when they take over. Then they bail out each other. Nobody's worth seven hundred million dollars a year because they're savvy business people. You only make that kind of money because it's either a dirty deal or an inside deal where the game is and I guess that's all they're all the same. So what we need to go back to is what America is supposed to be. And that's a capitalistic society where you rise and fall on your own merits. If that's the game, then anybody large or small could win it. Well, Gerald, your vision and ability to connect trends is, is fabulous. Uh, I've been following you for about 30 months at least. And I would like to encourage engineers to connect with your insights through your publication, The Trends Journal. Uh, how, please tell us how to get The Trends Journal. Our website is Trends, that's plural, trendsresearch.com, trendsresearch.com. And also, Eric, this is going to be the, one of the greatest times for engineers. It, it's a whole new era of inventiveness. The, the old century is leaving us behind along with the old thoughts. You know, mothers of invention is one of the top trends for 2010. Inventions for the poor. Look what they're doing over in, in India. They're taking the highest of high tech and making products to service a, a declining economy or a poor economy. And, and so that's what you, you, you start looking at. Again, it, it's not environmental. It's smart. Let's start doing things smartly. Over here at the Trends Research Institute, one of our projects for the coming year is we're putting a roof garden on. But not just a roof garden with grass. You know, being Italian, it's going to be tomatoes yeah. and roof, basil. We're putting a full-blown roof garden up there. We do everything we can, ergonomically smart, environmentally smart, and, and satisfying to the soul. That's what the future is, not the bottom line thinking. That's great advice, Gerald. Um, I thank you so much for being with us here today on Engineer.net, and um, hopefully we can speak in the future. Well, thank you very much, Eric, and good luck to you.